Right, well, after doing the last couple of intro, outro bits in my back garden, I thought I'd make an effort today. I thought I'd um, search out a lovely, typical spring bit of scenery. And as you can see, I've managed to find it in the shape of a beautiful bluebell woods, which is just five minutes from my house. And the uh, first time I've been up here this year since I've been out, so uh, yeah, lovely to see. Right, Carp Angle, episode 21. Already? time is absolutely flying by isn't it anyway got a great show lined up for you i have to apologize in advance because there is no joe's diary this month or joe blogs fishing in the moment whatever you want to call it and the reason for that is that i've been busy and i've managed to get out for a couple of trips but i'd rather get ahead of myself a little bit first then that way I'm not getting to the lake and finding someone on my pre-baited spots you know which is always a risk when you're doing regular um, diaries that are up to date. In the past, there's always been sort of four months behind or so. Um, but yeah, after a long winter, I've managed to use up all my footage. So what have we got lined up for you? Well, we've got Alan Blair out on the bank at a really nice lake actually, a, well, a complex of lakes in Norfolk. Um, we sort of set ourselves the challenge of catching one from each of the lakes. Um, and aside from that, We've got a few other little stories. I've also chucked in there a piece I've done as a carp angle extra on Google Earth. And the reason I put it in the main show as well is because the viewing figures weren't that great. I think it only got about 13,000 views. So I thought, well, there's a lot of you lot who haven't seen that for whatever reason, and there's lots of good information on there. So I've included that on this month's show. If you've seen it on YouTube already, I apologize, but obviously you can just skip forward. Um, once again, massive thank you for all your support. Um, the contributions have kind of gone down a little bit lately, but obviously, you know, it's that time of year, I guess. Um, but as a little incentive this month, I'm going to be offering some prizes. So what have we got for you? Well, we've got £500 worth of towels up bait in two individual packages, so two lots of £250 bundles um, featuring a whole host of goodies. As well as that, we've got two 48-hour sessions for two on the Mega Ashbury Fisheries. So if you fancied having a go on there after seeing the... Uh, well, we've done two features on there now, haven't we? Um, yeah, with plenty of good fish. If you fancy a little go at that, then all you have to do is anyone who's contributing five pounds or more into this month's pot will go into that draw, and then I'll do a draw live on Instagram um, sometime towards the end of the month. So, that's, an, that's enough of my chatting. Let's crack on with the show. Thanks again, enjoy. Well, here we are. Up in Narfolk. Absolutely. First time for a carp angle up in this county. Is it really? Yeah. How many episodes are you on now? 20, this will be 21. Is it really? And you've not been to Norfolk yet? Poor, Mad. Poor, eh? Not but yeah. poor, but... It's, uh, there's some stunning lakes in the county, aren't there? Yeah, I was just saying to you, you know, I spent the last couple of years up in this neck of the woods. I think, historically, well, certainly what I'd heard on the grapevine, it'd been battered by otters, you know, and it was sort of left alone. Um, but I think it couldn't be further from the truth. I think people have got hold of these fisheries, in the case of this one, really managed them, and it's a thriving county for carp angling now, or as much as I can see, proper thriving. Yeah, really nice place, Joe. Thanks for inviting me. So yeah, we're at Layfield Lakes, which is a, a syndicate with three lakes on the complex and the fourth one that they've just dug, which they're uh, developing at the moment. Don't think that's been fished yet, but they've been fed a lot, Al. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a bit smaller than it is. We're yeah. about halfway around our first lap and it's a proper maze, like a real proper maze. Joe's got Google Maps up a couple of times just so we can find our bearings, which that ain't a negative, that's a massive positive, it's exciting, you know, it's, it's not a, a hole in the ground as such. No, it's um, a proper little labyrinth, isn't it? Loads of uh, little spits and islands and... Loads like, of little channels, you know, some big wide channels and then some really, really small, intricate little channels. Maybe some of them the fish don't pass through, maybe they do, don't know. Um, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. Well, we've got 48 hours ahead of us. Um, we've seen some pictures of some stunning Bangers. fish from here. Yeah. Some really nice dark ones and uh, yeah, by all accounts there's there's a few forties kicking about as well. Yeah. So uh what do you reckon? Have a wander around. Keep and... looking, knock a bit of bait up. Hopefully this sun stays out now. We've had a right downpour for the last sort of forty five minutes. And yeah, just see if we can find some. This bit of water in front of now, in comparison to everything else we've looked at, is really coloured. 
We've seen a few bream roll in. Um, that sort of gut instinct is the, the, the pools or the areas of water that are tap clear. Probably not that many fish in them. Um, so yeah, probably have a good old a good old look here. Dally on. Come on. because I just want to fish to my strengths and that is like using these, using my eyes at night, using the torch, etc, etc, staying motivated. That other pit, as much as it looks amazing, you know, I can't see anything. <laughs> There's a chop on the water and you come in here, it's a lot more intimate, smaller. Straight away, you see. Clarities and, and dead, dead fish, fish. <laughs> I'm doing it, I'm going on it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away, you said you preferred this one, didn't you? Yeah. Big old hatch. The confidence thing as well. Knowing you're fishing. Yeah, otherwise it's just kind of guessing, isn't it? Yeah, or you get that marker rod out and do 200 casts. And then like... you feel like you've killed the area anyway. <laughs> This is a bit more me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is much more Alan. <laughs> much more Alan. There's a big black 48 pound mirror in here as well, Al. It's madness. <laughs> I'll stick on the kids' bomb, mate. It's like Narnia around here. Oh, I love it. Alan's reading the rules. I don't want to get banned before I've even got any gear out of the motor. Uh, now nah, it's important. And to be fair, they're really, really sensible. There's nothing there that I think, oh, that's a bit stupid. Like they're all legit, all genuine rules. And as it says at the top, you know, it's for the fish's safety, which is, is totally fair enough. What are you thinking now? I'm having a lovely time. The rain's gone, the sun's out. Um, the lake's had a bit dry recently, which is, a good thing for the fishery, not a great thing for us anglers, um, just because it makes seeing them, seeing into the water difficult. They're also our gravel pits, so they're deep, man. Like once you get off that marginal slope and the cabbages and the emerging lilies disappear, it's like the abyss. Um, and we've had a bit of rough weather the last few days, really cold weather, actually. Um, so yeah, they're not all drifting around or like, oh. Um, seen very little, long story short, very little. In fact, one fish. Feeding fish, mine, but only one fish. See a couple of bream roll. I'm half tempted to be lazy and just go back to the motor and knock up a bucket of bait, but I think we've done so well so far, looking everywhere. We should really finish off going around Willow, and then we have genuinely completed a lap of all three lakes on, on the complex. Um, and then I am going to knock up that bucket of bait, jump back onto Oak, which has got really good clarity, fantastic clarity. Bait a couple of spots there, uh, then go and bait a couple of spots, that bit that you showed me, Joe, sort of halfway down Pines before it goes into that other section. You can just make out some clearer spots down there, bait those, and then probably stand for half an hour, uh, a good vantage point on Pines. Just sit there, stand there, maybe stick a brew on, because um, probably drop on there for the night tonight. It seems to be, speaking with Darren, the owner, the most of the fish, or, or certainly the better fish are in that one, probably do the night there, but Typical Joe, he's give us the challenge. Let's catch one from each of the lakes. So yeah, I do want to get a little bit of bait into each of them and then we can go, go to work properly tomorrow. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to be running around keeping up with you. Yeah, come on. <laughs> and if I get a chance to fish, I will. <laughs> 
Going in your mix there now. I've got some new particles on the go. Isn't we're it? um we're trying a couple. Of, I'm gonna have to carry two buckets, which is annoying. I might see if I can shoehorn it into a, a bait box. But basically, like it's only really on one lake. It's the only lake I've got the clarity to look down. There's a few lads fishing, a few lads here working at the moment, and there's been a bit of bait going in. I don't know, half a dozen, maybe eight spots. Um, a lot of that bait's still there. It's like a real pale pellet um, and a real pale boilie. Um, there's also some of the spots that have been cleared um, and I know that really because the spots are a little bit cratered i.e the sides are not you know they've got a gradient on them and there's bait on the side of it and a little bit of bait but it's been cleared out in the middle now for the birds have had been in there I'm pretty sure they would have eaten a lot greedy swans or, or whatever uh, and then there's another spot we actually saw fish feeding on it anyway I've, I digress basically I'm going to knock up a, a light coloured scopex squid mix scopex squid flake some little 12 millers very similar to what whoever's been baiting has been putting in just because I get the impression these fish are well looked after they see a bit of bait and I'm just going to kind of use that as a possible option mimicking basically what they're seeing as free food from other anglers and then I'm going to go very au natural, real dark. I haven't actually seen really many gravel or, or cleared spots at all. There's just clearer, siltier areas in amongst the sort of emerging cabbages. And on that, I'm just going to put a tight, I don't even really want that maize in there. That there, maybe a few diary seeds and some red maize, but something a bit darker over the silt. Um, just in case those sort of blatant white pellet and boily areas, they almost signalise danger. So two kind of lines of attack at the moment. Um, and just see if we can get a reaction in the next couple of hours before we lose that sun. Uh, failing that, I'm going to set up some choddies and some zigs and fish proper spring tactics, mate. Just wait for a few shows later on and fling something on them. Definitely one of the, yeah, it's just drifting out. Yeah, mid 20s. Chew him. He's come back in again. He ain't dark. Good fish, man. Really good fish. Yes, Adam. Exciting stuff. He ain't gonna be able to ignore them maggots. Is there a nice spot there? Is there a spot there? It's basically one of them ones we've had loads of bait on it and there's just a few remnants left, a couple of boilies, and he was just sitting just off the side of it. He, I can't see him now. Whereas so much of it is like just debris and silt and it's just, just about getting down onto clear. It's not. Nice. I think they say it's a bite. So I've thrown bait on it, he said, he's just like... Oh. <laughs> Alan's got his buzz on. Got a little spring. Loads of bait. He's already beat me to it. I've been like mad fast in front of him, like checking everywhere. Checking. And uh, he's sort of not been lagging, but catching up, trying to film me and that. Uh, and he beat me. <laughs> he's got in here, he's found the mother the home. Go in there, go in there. Is it mad? Well, I saw half, well, at least uh, half a dozen. Oh, bro. <laughs> Basically, I've made my swim for choice for the night. <laughs> it's that point. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs>
talk about this rake there now, because that's a very handy little tool you've got there, mate. Uh, yeah, so it's just a really long landing net pole, extendable pole, um, and then a uh, free out thread in the top. So you normally fit a landing net to it. Uh, I've just put a sort of weed rake, double-sided, and it's just really useful, maybe for pulling the odd branch down that's getting in the way and overhanging bra bramble, or of course, uh, either for sort of testing the depth, especially somewhere like this. The light's not fantastic, it's got some blue dye in it. Um, it looks really deep, it's actually just, you know, a foot and a half deep. Um, and yeah, I can feel the depth and also clear areas off. Swim early, I took quite a lot of branches out off the bottom that would have just given me really bad line lay. Terrible, in fact. Um, just a really useful, handy multi-tool. I like that, mate. Oh, Wilson would be proud of you, mate. Raking up, ready for the tench in the morning. <laughs> Big tench as well. Are there? 14 pounds, he says. No way. Yeah. Yeah, this can really work for or against you. It can be deadly, man. And it can be deadly quite quickly. Or if you knock off the wrong sort of gases up at the bottom, you know, that real stinking horrible stuff. Sometimes you might be walking in waders and you're like, that's, that's not good, man. Um, looking at this now, it looks like quite fresh leaf debris. Yes, there's a lot of bubbles coming up, but it's not uh, been rotting in there for years and years and years. So I'm going to give it a quick turnover, put a little bit of bait over it, and this is going to be my lift float spot for the morning. What, in 40 mile an hour winds? Yeah. <laughs> give me a siren. Should we bait on the back of the wind as well? Definitely. What were you saying when we walked down? Those four pads? Well, What's Nick saying? When you've got nothing, something is everything. The only four pads emerged in the lake. <laughs> I finally called it. It was somewhat of a difficult decision. It's fishing for you. Um, you're always weighing up the options and somewhere like this, there's a lot of options. Um, however, I, I suppose I've took the easier one. Uh, Joe referenced it earlier. You know, go where the fish tell you kind of thing. And we've seen fish in here. We've seen fish feeding in here and it probably lends itself to the easiest bite. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, that is Oak Lake. I'm going to ship three rigs across with the baiting pole, go around there. Bit of a rigmarole, but worth it, um, and basically set up washing lines. Um, recently, there's been a bait boat bam, um, but the fish have been fished for for years with bait boats, you know. So people are managing to get into the, the really good areas, um, but what they're probably not doing is sort of bringing their line up above the water. They'll have their line cutting across here. Um, I'm going to refrain from doing that, keeping it over the surface, and hopefully that's going to be a little edge for me. Um, I've got one slight issue, and that is there's a big shoal of bream, <laughs> and they're like circling this spot. Don't really know how to get around that at the moment. Um, yeah, granted, I could put massive boilies on or a big hinge with a 20 mil pop up, and I'm not sure I'm going to catch a carp like that. I'll play it by ear. If I get pestered by them too much, it's quite a process setting up the washing line for, for bream, but we'll see how it goes. Full of confidence, Joe's going to drop in next to me. Yeah, hopefully it won't rain too much. Let's go fishing. Get him out. Come on, let's go fishing. We're fishing. Oh, I couldn't have done it without you, mate. It was, um, <clears throat> yeah, quite some sections. Pretty much all the sections I've got uh, right across into this corner. Wedged it in a tree, then took part of Joe's pole around there, caught hold of it, and yeah, at this point, I definitely needed a bit of help. So thanks for that, mate. Joe basically shipped back, managed to get the lead out. Joe carried on shipping, uh, attached the rig, tiny little 12 miller, and um, the perfect placement. Nice. Um, tiny little bit of light pruning. Um, and yeah, we're all set up. Stuck a few big add-on weights onto the bobbin. Going to do the same on this one and the same on my third one. I think I mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's a little intimate venue. It's been hammered by bait boats. Um, so the pole's not a huge edge, but what is an edge is elevating all those lines. We've got the old analogue bait boats, haven't we? We have, mate, yeah. <laughs> Bushwhacker. 
Uh, <laughs> a bit of a wind, it's kind of pulling it this way, but yeah, it worked. The thing is, there's a lot more skill to it as well, isn't there? You know, I mean, to, to be able to get a bait to where you've got a bait, you know, is it takes work. It's not just yeah driving a bait boat over there no, and dropping it. <laughs> no, it's about 11 o'clock, isn't it? <laughs> We're only one rod in. Uh, to be fair, like, it gets a little bit shorter now, and it's off the back of the wind, this second rod. And then my, my third rod, it's a channel that takes you through to another real interesting bit of water. Um, and that's only going to be sort of 10 sections, so a nice easy one. But yeah, I'm really hopeful. When I went round and done it, I see about 10 fish, to be honest. <laughs> like, there, flake all gone, a few 12 millers left. Um, they have disappeared now, but... It's going to sound like, you know, a bit of a plug being that you've just brought out, you know, all this range of torches, but it's been an eye-opener to me, and it should have been something that's really obvious, but, um, you know, checking spots, checking baited spots, and you, you can see so much more can't you at night like yeah, you've got a massive one in my face now yeah. it's, it's it's what it is is it's like this one now it's really intrusive and it's really like me going around there and doing to those carp since i've been back around they've gone they've gone you know and you said to me what because they've eaten all the bait no, no no there's still a bit of bait there they've gone because i've lamped them up you know and they haven't liked it yeah but like i always say joe the point is bloody good chance of return <laughs> mm. like a really good chance that's their happy place that's their little you know a bit of the lake that they love spending time and if you do turn up in the dark and you don't identify that then you never know you know so 100 percent. but like i say i mean for checking margin spots you can see everything so much more than you can in the daytime 100 percent. especially today really strange light um sort of direct down on the water a lot of blue in the water um, it's a dark, silty bottom, you know, it's not helping and uh, yeah, loads of reasons why it's not been very easy to see today. It, whack the, the big light on and it's like ding, you see everything, absolutely everything. And that first rod that's gone out is, nice. I don't want to jinx it, so it'd, be, it'd be a bit to camera in the morning of coffee. Didn't catch one. <laughs> but it should go, yeah, definitely at some point. Cool, well, well I'll let you get these other ones out anyway, mate. Good morning. Good morning. This morning. A bit of a chilly old start, isn't it, mate? Really cold. Got up once or twice through the night. I was thinking, like, it's really warm and mild. And yeah, this morning the wind's properly picked up. It's bitter. Stuck more joggers on, snowed, another jumper. Not really the ideal spring conditions that we were after. Nah. Um, and the result of that is we haven't caught anything. <laughs> Uh, to say I was confident is an understatement. You know, I spent a significant amount of time getting my rods out. Um, yeah, perfect placement. Fish were there. They had been using the areas. Uh, God, you've got to come with a good excuse, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I can only imagine it is a deep little pit and they've just dropped down off those sort of marginal shelves and I didn't catch. Well, we've got 45 mile an hour winds, it's just starting to pick up now. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a windy old day. It doesn't seem like there's many calm areas around the complex either, does there? Yeah. It's sort of the wind's hitting hitting everywhere. I'm, um, I've just skipped a rod in uh, that was in, you know, like four foot of water. I'm just going to whack it in a bag. Whack it in a bag, send it down there. You know that area you keep going, oh, I think there's a bit of fizzing down there. And I've definitely seen one fish crash this morning. Um, I'd like say maybe they're just sitting off that shelf in that deeper water. Yeah, when I messed up a couple of those sh uh, big long ships out with a pole last night where it bowed too much and I ended up just dropping the rig, it was like one hell of a, you know, really deep, 12, 15 foot, I don't know. So yeah, I'm just gonna punch a bag down there. I think the pressure's pretty low as well. So mm. I imagine it'd be comfortable in them deeper areas. But yeah, kind of, if I'm honest, really hope to have one in the retainer, quick pick. Hey, morning everyone! <laughs> and then back, well next lake, yeah, next <laughs> lake, next lake. Uh, it's not working out like that. Might have to long it out. 
What time did you say the wind's going? Three? I think so, yeah. That's a long old day of logging it out. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, 45 mile an hour winds don't really go well with a bushwhacker, do they, mate? <laughs> I persevered last night, just about made it work. Uh, but this morning, well, this afternoon, I've just slammed them across. A little light lead, like a casting sort of tournament style lead, two ounces. That's got me over here. Uh, come round, used uh, the baiting pole to retrieve the line, pulled it out of the, the gravel where it's sort of proper dug in. And yeah, I'm good to go. I've got my rig in my pocket. It's going in the spoon now, I'm going to ship out here right at the bottom of this drop off. You can just see these tiny little areas of like sandy gravel uh, in amongst the cabbages. But if I'm honest, I'm getting played a little bit at the moment or I've been a very, very impatient angler because I've just reeled a rod in, gone around there to remove the washing line clip on the stick and there's two fish down there feeding. So that's it now for me. Joe's having a move later on this afternoon and I am definitely sitting put. Um, I'm getting these rods in position now and I'm leaving them. I've just not got to touch them. Um, it's in enough to tickle your fancy, mate, isn't it? There's three up in that corner this morning. Again, I had a rod there this morning, brought it in. Um, and then an hour or so later, there was three fish in there feeding. They'd all but cleared it all out. There's like half a dozen sort of whole 12 millers left. So I missed that opportunity. I've got a rod back in there now, but will they come back in? I don't know. I just need to put a rod out and leave it. <laughs> what are you saying? You're going. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we thought it was going to be a little bit easier, but the weather's been a little bit against us, and uh, it's better that, you know, two of us are on it, isn't it? Fishing, yeah. You know, to try and uh, up the chances of getting something nice for the cameras. So, uh, yeah, I'm putting a little bit of effort in. I found a nice little area that looks bang on. Baited it for later. Where's that on the pines? Yeah. On the pines. Yeah, it's kind of like a little shallow, snaggy area. And then there's a uh, bit more sheltered. Yeah, it is a bit sheltered. Yeah, yeah especially nice. like where my bivvy will be. It's got a big high bank behind it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure in such big winds. Um, so yeah, hopefully between us, mate, we can uh, final night winkle one or two out. I suppose you need that pretty tight with that tension, don't you? And the wind, yeah. Quite. and the geese, and the bats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want it pulling out. But conversely, obviously, if you get up too tight, you could possibly run the risk of basically the fish becoming tethered on it. It's never actually happened to me, nor have I ever been cut off. The pads are really soft. You just got to get it right. That's a little bit tight at the moment. That's really nice. Then you can just release it, pop it back in. Yeah, just got to imagine a big old car going bang, bang. <laughs> well, sheltering in the old bivvy because it's starting to rain. Well, I've moved round to Pines Lake, a uh, swim known as the Double, apparently. There's some snags opposite me, quite a big overhang. And then behind that, it goes into a shallow bit with a nice clear area. You can see it's all been polished off. And there was a fish in there earlier. So it's obviously an area they use. So I baited that up this morning probably about two, three hours ago now, and then went round about an hour and a half later and just put another couple of handfuls of maggots in, just in case they had been eating it. The depth's sort of about five foot and there's quite a lot of um, colour in the water here, so you can't see the actual bait on the bottom, but it feels like a good zone. And then I had a little flick around with a lead to the left-hand side of the island and it, there's a bit of a ledge, shallow ledge, that goes off of the end of that, as you could imagine, sort of a bit of a point. Um, and yeah, just found where it dropped off into, just as it goes into the softer stuff. So the end of that sort of point, quite the water's winds whipping across here now with the old uh, rain. Um, so yeah, and on that one, I've just spread a few boilies about 
uh, you know, like we said before, this is a bait boat water. It was um, until now. It's, they've actually been banned on this, this particular water now. So, you know, they're used to tight piles of bait. So I thought I'll just spread, not a load, probably about 70, 80 baits around that area. So if they're coming round into this bay, then they're going to pass that, hopefully. Um, and it's a bit deeper as well. I'm probably in about 12 foot of water there. So I'm covering my options. I've got one in 12, one in five and a half, and one in about four. I will have when I get them out anyway. I'm not going to put them out just yet because um, I feel like there's any, you know, there's every chance I could be running around to see Alan at any point now. And I don't think it's going to hurt to, you know, sort of prime up the spots and leave them for a bit. Yeah, here comes the sun again. I have just seen a couple ghosting over a little clear spot in the in the oaks as well, right down this end of the oaks. So um, yeah, I might even put a rod in there and sit on that for an hour or so. Uh, yeah, I'm still optimistic, very optimistic. There's still plenty of time left, and it's always nice to be in a new swim. Last night, to be honest with you, I just dropped in next to Alan for convenience of being able to film him, and I wasn't really expecting to get the rods out today because I thought Alan would be on missions however because the fishing and the weather has been how it is you know Alan feels that his best option is to sit on his rods which I agree with him you know he knows them fish are coming in and visiting them spots fairly regularly so it should just be a matter of time before one drops down and he gets a bite um, but yeah I'm hopeful for this swim tonight there's a grebe sitting in a nest over there that's the only thing that's not ideal because if they do go into that shallower area then she's probably going to be uh, chasing them off what well, was mad actually this morning when I walked around to bait up that spot originally, there was no eggs on the nest, and then two hours later there was four. Oof. I mean she's got a sore bum this morning. <laughs> Savaloy. Well, dropped a bag with a bit of bush whackery onto that spot where I'd seen a couple. About a quarter of a pint of maggots in the bag. And uh, yeah, probably took about two and a half hours in the end, but it absolutely ripped off. And we've got something a little bit special here. It's an absolutely cracking common, which is just over 30 pound. Wow, look at him. Absolutely mega common, lovely dark colours, little head, big hump on his shoulders, small mouth, mega tail, look at the size of that tail. Took a couple of hours or so, but when it went, it really did absolutely rip off. And uh, as you can see, mega prize, and Joey's super happy. So uh, gonna get a couple of quick snaps of him and get him back and then uh, gonna get me rods out on pine for the night. Well done you, mate. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Mega. Well chuffed with that. What's a carp? Ugh. They look so cool in you know, that colour, don't they? Calm, bruv. Calm, bruv. <laughs> Louder. Word of the session. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> We've been watching too much Top Boy. You're all right, Sally. Hello, mate. How's it going? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Very, very good. I had a power nap, didn't I? That's, do you know what? It's not like you. A, a guy yeah, visited me. He said, uh, I tried calling you, and he said, maybe he's asleep. I said, nah, it'll be around it, you know, around the corner having a little look or something, but he won't be asleep. This is Alan Blair. Don't get me wrong. I was tired, <clears throat> but it wasn't through sleep deprivation, even though we didn't get finished last night to about half one. I was back up at half five. It was actually a last gasp desperation tactic you know you know when you're young 
you'll have had it, Joe, like you float fishing or maybe float fishing and you know you need to feed, but you're holding the rod, like poised, ready for the bite. But you know you need to feed and you just set the rod down, get the catapult and you get the bite, you know? And I thought, maybe if I just have a little lay down for half hour, an hour, one of them will buckle. No. No. It's, it's mad, isn't it? How many times that you've just got into bed, you've been sitting there all evening yeah. and it don't matter what time you choose to go to bed, just get in the bed and it goes. And, and that was the tactic. Um, I've employed a lot of different tactics over the sort of 24 hours we've been here. Um, and that was the last desperate tactic. It didn't work. Um, yeah, I'm basically sticking to my guns. Um, I know I'm fishing. I know I'm presented well. I know the rigs are in areas that the fish are frequently visiting a lot. You know, so much so I stood up there earlier and watched three big mirrors. Uh, one of them very uninterested, he was sort of like stuck in a root ball, just like rubbing himself. But the other two, you know, they went over and over and over the top of the rig. There's only a tiny little bit of bait edge, not interested. So have um, you changed anything for tonight? No, I haven't, mate. Um, uh, two of the rods have dropped much further down the shelf, so I'm not in sort of three, four foot of water. I'm probably in eight, nine foot of water. Well, they just, might be a bit more confident. And would you a real cold snap tonight? Um, and I don't know if it would just push him down off that margin. But other than that, no, I've stuck to my guns. Little short slip Ds, little 12 millers, um, and a little bit of flake over the top. Um, I wish I could put a bit of particle and pellet in, but the amount of bream I've seen, I don't want my first bite from this amazing complex to be a bream. So no, <laughs> uh, sticking to what I know should work, um, and I just hope that at some point in the night, I get one and pack up and move because I'm still up for this free late challenge. You know, <clears throat> I'm so happy you caught that one. Not just any old one either. What a car. God, it's incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, it gave me a proper buzz that one, mate. It was, uh... So, in theory, we've done pines. You've done pines. We need one out of You this wouldn't day. settle for that, though. <laughs> Not after what you've seen. Well, we need one out of here and. Sorry, and yeah. We've yeah, got we've willows. done oaks, yeah. Done oaks. We need one out of it here. No, you've done part. You've caught one up. No, this no, is that. that. Up. Oh, okay, <laughs> I might as well pack up now and move. No, no, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. There's no <laughs> way you. There's no way you'd settle for that after seeing what you've seen. You've well, seen a couple of proper chunky dark mirrors around yeah, here, mate. You just you've had them chewing. You, you just told me a minute ago you've met a lad who showed you some photos of some mega commons in Willow. Mate, jet black upper thirties. I think one of them might even be a forty, but. You wait till I show you these pictures. Oh, uh, you're going to be packing up. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> oh! But, what, what, did you see my... Duck on the washing line. Oh, no, I ain't taking it out, is it? Nah. Oh, right. Nah. Um, That's the thing with them clips, you know, you've, you've just got to get that tension. If that was too loose, mate, that would have been wipe out. And that's something, I, I know that's a product uh, that's designed for catfish fishing, but as you've got something on the way, have you? Or is that top something, secret? Something, yeah. Am I going to have to edit this bit out? No, nah, you ain't going to have to edit <laughs> it out. Like, because I'm, I just think it's a really good tactic, bruv. Like, if you look at a venue like this, bait boats are allowed, so the pole ain't an edge. Not really, apart from the sound that a bait boat makes and the pole's real stealthy, but it's not a huge edge. So what can I do here differently now, Bream? What can I do differently here now to, to the other anglers that have fished here? For years and years and years, you know, the fish see pressure, it's a syndicate. Uh, and that's where something like the washing line usually comes into its own, mate, you know, elevating those lines up out of the water. In theory, they shouldn't feel the pressure, i.e. there's not lines cutting across. Um, mm. Well, I guess, you know, if there was any fish, or if there was a few fish, which there obviously was, because I saw a few, up that other end, that yeah. fish fought like mad for about 15 minutes having Did a proper really? terror. So, you know, I imagine they're going to push up here if there was anything down it there. It could be, you know, a lot of speculation in carp fishing, but it could be the reason they've all of a sudden started showing up here. Maybe. I've been looking down there, you and know. Especially with really you no know lines through the water. So. Yeah, you know, just pushed up here and... Oh, it's going to happen, mate. It's going to happen. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I reckon... Before, before it gets dark, one of these is twanging around. Um, and what about you? You're going to um, jump on pines? Yeah, all set up, Seen ready to go. Right Cast one across, ready for a washing line. Cool. Um, put a bit of bait out. You know, that's had most of the day today, so... Yeah. Oh, God. Bird sounded like a delkin, didn't it? <laughs> I, think I ain't got a delkin, and I haven't got any rods out either. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really nice place, man. Awesome. All right then, mate. Well, yeah, best of luck. Yeah, I'll see you in and, the morning, uh, hopefully with some good news. Yeah, I might see you before. And good luck yourself. Here's a shout.
Well, good evening. Um, so I set up on pines, got my rods out just as it was getting dark, and literally about an hour after it got dark, I heard a few like weird sloshing sounds out to the left, not far from where I'm fishing. I thought, well, what's all that about then? I thought it might have been like a duck out there going a bit mad. I thought, no, it sounded like a fish. Anyway, over the next 15, 20 minutes, I must have heard 30 to 40 shows out there. Um, and then over the last half hour or so, there's probably been another 8 to 10. So, it's going off out there, I tell you. Some real big old sloshes as well. It's quite a cool lake, this one. Um, I think it's about 20 acres in total, but it's made up of three different sections and there's little bridges that go over across little channels and um, yeah, just like loads of islands, loads of features, like proper old school gravel pits, so uh, every feature you could wish for. Um, and some mega carp as well, and bowl accounts, you know, there's fish in here that got stocked sort of 14 years ago and still haven't been out, so yeah, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty special place this. Can't believe it's not been on my radar before. But I'll definitely be back. I'm quite hopeful for tonight anyway. Um, you'd think there's a chance of something happening with the activity that's going on out here in this section of the lake. And if it's not tonight, then hopefully it'll be first thing in the morning. To be honest with you, I'm so tired now. I really need to get my head down. I'm struggling though, because you know, I feel like something could happen any minute. It could be a whacker. Buzzing. <laughs> Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> oh, it's a lovely, crisp old morning. Proper f harsh frost last night. There's, uh, there was so many fish out last night, I couldn't believe I didn't get a bite. There's been a bit of bubbling this morning. But I ended up having an eel and getting pestered by eels on another rod. Um, rods that were tipped with maggots, so obviously that's not the one in here. And then this morning I've been a little bit impatient because the sun's only been up about half an hour and I've already recast two rods onto, uh, onto some bubblers which were past where I was fishing. Which is probably where they were showing last night, to be honest with you. I sat on my hands thinking, no, nah, they'll we'll push over. They weren't that far out, much further out, but I don't know. I presume they weren't doing a lot of feeding. They were probably just having a, having a, bit, of a uh, bit of a show. But it was pretty mental. There's obviously quite a few in here. Um, I spoke to Alan, he didn't have a particularly successful night by the sounds of it, he said uh, pestered by bream, maybe that's where he's fishing a bit deeper down the ledge, a bit more confident feeding down there, there's another bubbler just to the left here, oh there's another bubbler, oh I'll tell you what, there's got a bit of chance of a bite here this morning, there's a fair bit of uh, feeding activity going on in, in and around the area, so Fingers crossed, any minute now, one of these. Whee! Let's have it. I'm hoping Alan gets one though. He's worked blooming hard and I can't believe he's not had a bite really, you know, because they've been in there, he's fishing really, really well. Um, they're washing lines and all that, you just can't beat that kind of tactic. So, yeah, I'm really surprised. They're obviously quite, quite shy in there. <laughs> Clever little buggers, but I'm sure he's going to pull it out of the bag. I have faith in you, Alan. Well, what an absolutely glorious day it's turning out to be. Could have done with this weather yesterday and the day before. This time of year, you really want that spring sunshine and warmth. You know, that sunlight penetrating the water. and They're just like us, the solar panels, they like to feel the warmth. So, um, yeah, I'm sitting it out at the moment. I feel like bite time's passed, but you never know. Alan's gone uh, off on missions, he packed up. 
I'm sure he's probably kicking himself already, you know, because I know he loves a mission and uh, there's so much water to explore here. So he's probably thinking, oh, why did I sit there for, for two nights? But, you know, when he was seeing what he was seeing, it, oh, go on, the middle rod, little liner. Yeah, as I say, when he'd seen what he'd seen, he couldn't be moving really, and it looked like it was game on for one, but yeah, it wasn't to be on uh, Oak Lake for him for this session, but I know he'll be back. So, yeah, I'm going to give it another hour or so here, um, and then I'm going to go and catch up with Alan, see what he's up to, and maybe give it a couple of hours on Willow this afternoon. I'm also considering staying tonight. I mean, the, the amount of fish I heard last night was just ridiculous, and... Uh, I feel like I really should have had a result or there could be a good result to be had, you know. So I think if I put one more night in, it's a good chance of uh, getting one out of here. I think the game plan's going to be spread two or three kilos of boilies all around that zone where they were uh, showing and where there was a bit of fizzing going on this morning and try and get them, you know, sort of grazing on a good bit of grub. There was enough of them out there, just a case of getting a few of them switched onto a bit of food and then the others will soon follow. Free rods are going to be scattered around that same sort of zone. I'm not going to like, try and find spots. I'm just going to fish in the area for a drop and uh, spread a bit of bait around there. But that's tonight. In the meantime, we've got a whole day of sunshine ahead of us. I'm sure there's going to be an opportunity to be found somewhere. Come on, the carp gods. Let Alan have a big black scaly mirror or a big dark common yeah that would do 101 102 103 104 <laughs> Right, I just thought I'd show you quickly what I caught that fish on yesterday. In a world of complicated rig mechanics and expensive components, you'll probably find this quite refreshing. Size 8 wide gape hook, knotless knot, 5 inches of soft supple braid, half an 8 mil main line pop-up, one of the little mini micro ones, and then a little bunch of maggots on top of that, threaded on with a needle. No messing about, simple as you like, and uh, as I say, I think in this modern world where everyone's using stiff resetting rigs and heavy sort of components, you know, swivels and you know, lots of metalware and what have you. I think sometimes it can be a big edge to simplify things a little bit and uh, yeah, back to basics. Obviously that done the job yesterday. That was fish with a big sock of maggots, bushwhackered out onto the spot and uh, yeah, done the business. Yes, yes, yes. He's found him. He's on it. I've got one. Snapped out of his uh, sitting on the rods mode. Oh, it's not a bit of me, man. It ain't. But they were there and I felt I was fishing well. And... I kept saying, I'm sure it's only a matter of time, you know, but you know, there's only so long you can think that and sit it out. There is, it. when I kind of wanted to be leaving about now and heading back to Essex, but uh, I'm going to stay put a little bit longer. We've got some good weather today, or better than we've had. Bloody cold last night, really cold. Um, I did drop rods down into the deep water, produced four bream for me. Um, I had a duck this morning, which I thought was it, like a proper take. Um, no, it was a duck. So I carefully slipped that back and then just contemplated any possible bad decisions I'd made. Had I put too much bait in? Was I fishing too shallow? Had I made too much? Just, you just play things over and you had, why hasn't it worked? And simple fact is it hadn't. Um, so anyway, I packed up. Been on the move all morning. I've been around all the lakes, seen very, very little until I got to Willow and I uh, found a group of fish just over my shoulder. Caught one very, very quickly, slow sinking bunch of maggots. It wasn't actually slow sinking. I had to let it settle on the bottom and then the fish come in and find it. Um, really nice little scaly one. And then, yeah, I noticed just quite how high up the fish are. It doesn't look that great at the moment and the wind's picked up, but it was real calm and sunny and it looked like there might have been a floater opportunity. So I've grabbed the rod. Got some uh, floaters. Ollie would say it's fool's gold. He may well be right, but 
But even if it isn't, there's quite a lot of fish down this end of the lake and hopefully I can nick another one before I disappear. But yeah, really happy Joe. Like, <laughs> So did you see him take the bait or did you, was the line just going? So it was a line thing. I just literally there um, cast, fish were sort of circling this sort of darker hole uh, in amongst the cabbages. Cast was really good, went down well. A couple of fish investigated it. One better one sort of done a circle over the top of it. And then the fish kind of like were out of sight, but I knew they were down there. And yeah, you just got to be patient. Don't strike at just tiny little twitches. They could be liners. But basically when that line starts snaking off and yeah, hook dead in the center of the top lip, um, which is quite common with that style of fishing. And uh, yeah, like I say, really nice scaly one, but I've seen some better ones. Come on in, mate. Much it? better ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> His dorsal. <laughs> I thought that was it then. God, it looks big, Joe. It's long, isn't it? It does look big, mate. Did he think about it? Oh, yeah, he kissed it. <laughs> and then it sat on his dorsal. Yeah, he's taking one, he's going to take this one. No, I missed it. Oh my God. And now my heart state starts racing really quickly. <laughs> oh, he's coming back. He's missed it again. <laughs> he's one of them. <laughs> and he's missed it again. <laughs> Should have gone to Specs over. <laughs> yeah, he spoke of it. He's not daft, man. That's not a bumblebee you can hear buzzing, that's Alan. <laughs> Literally <laughs> through the ground, mate. Don't take much, Joe. Couple of lips, mate, that's it. Wow. Yes, Alan. <laughs> Patience. Perseverance. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely fully. Well done, mate. That looks like a stunner, mate. Yes. Yeehaw! John Wilson would be proud of you, mate. Wow. God, you can see they've been hand selected in here, can't you? Now what? <laughs> <laughs> I should die, really. Uh, I want you to for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like John Wilson style, look at first, then worry about how you're going to get it in afterwards. That's 
is all he says. Done the risk assessment. Knew there was no dramas. <laughs> all good. No doubt. There are wet trainers. Perseverance and managed to pick out the one on one is. Don't get me wrong, it was a bigger common and I would have rathered that, but what a carp! Uh, caught exactly how I like it, sitting in amongst some trees, um, keeping the bait really stationary with it dangling over a very, very light branch. And yeah, up she come. Proper nice one. Thanks, Darren, man. Had the right results this morning, let me show <laughs> Really cool lake, really cool fish. Well, hello on top of the morning to you. Um, I had a blooming headache yesterday whilst Alan was here and progressively got worse throughout the day. And by the time he left, it kicked into a migraine. I just felt so rough. Um, still got my rods out and still put a bit of bait out out here. Where there was loads of fish showing the night before. Um, I actually fell asleep about eight o'clock in the evening because literally just had to shut my eyes because I felt so rough. So yeah, I wasn't really on the ball last night. I don't know if there was much showing out here. I did hear a couple before I went to sleep. And um, there's been two out here this morning. So I feel like there's got to be a chance. I had one liner. Um, but yeah, there's definitely not as much activity out here as yesterday. There was a lot more bubbling going on at this time in the morning. And I've heard a couple showing that section next to here, um, which is joined to this one. So maybe they've moved into there. But I still think if I sit on my rods and be patient, there should be a chance of a bite this morning. Hopefully, anyway. Come with carp gods. Nice, dark, scaly mirror, please. Or any carp will do, to be fair. But yeah, I can give it till about eight, half eight, and then uh, get on the road and trundle back to Colchester. But yeah, it's been a very enjoyable session. It's always an absolute pleasure filming with Alan. Um, you know, it sounds a bit cheesy to say he's an inspiration <laughs> when he's fishing, uh, but he is, you know, well, he's an inspiration full stop, you know, in, in work, life and fishing. Um, but yeah, when it comes to his fishing, he puts in maximum effort at all times. I mean, even when we got here, you know, he said, oh, can you pass me a phone? I want to see the shape of the lakes. And he's drawn out all the shape of the lakes on a bit of paper and then marked off on there where he's baited up, where he's seen spots and that. So. Never done that in my life. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mr. Organised for sure. Thanks again, Alan. It was uh, great to get out with you, mate. And uh, yeah, look forward to the next time. I've got a few ideas for some features. Uh, some quite interesting ones. So uh, yeah, I'm sure it won't be long before you see Alan on uh, Carp Angle again. just sitting there lapping up this glorious morning sunshine, loving life. And one of the bailiffs come around, I was just chatting to him, telling him how I'm really trying hard to sit on my hands and be patient. And it's not something that I'm very good at. I see there's fish showing in the other section, fish showed out here. And I was like, right, should I stick a rod on this one? No, Joe, just sit back and wait. You know, it's bite time, it's gonna happen. And uh, as he was stood there chatting to me, left hand rod is absolutely torn off. 
mega scrap, didn't want to come up off the bottom, I think, because the lead stayed on, it was just staying down deep. And uh, yeah, we've got one, challenge completed. Nice 20 pound mirror. Um, well, I reckon it's about 20 pound, actually. I haven't weighed it yet, it's in the sling, we'll get him out in a second and have a little look at him. Um, but yeah, buzzing. Obviously, it's always a massive relief when you set yourself a bit of a target like that. And I'm sure, you know, on another day, in the summer, I think we could probably do it in a day, you know, three lakes in a day. But at this time of year, obviously the weather hasn't been ideal. Um, so yeah, it wasn't wasn't super easy, but we completed it, and that's all that matters. Having said that, though, myself and Alan both absolutely love the place, and uh, will 100% be coming back in the future. The guy who owns it, Darren. Um, well, he's an inspiration himself, to be honest with you, because he had a bad accident quite a few years ago, um, lost the use of his legs, and he bought this place to sort of give himself you know, something to do, like a, a hobby, and yeah, he's put a hell of a lot of money and a hell of a lot of love into the place, and it really shows. You know, and it's one of them complexes that's only going to get better, the fish are going to carry on growing. Um, there's some absolutely stunning old creatures in here and some newer ones which are you know, packing on the weight as well. So, yes, yeah, definitely one to keep an eye on. Obviously, if you are looking for a venue, there are tickets going at the moment, but I can't imagine that there's going to be many going for long. Um, I'm sure the old weight in this will soon have quite a few on it because you know these sort of places are rare these days and uh, yeah, it hasn't, I'm surprised really that I hadn't really heard of it before. Um, so yeah, once again, thanks to James for giving us the tip off and uh, thanks to Darren for letting us come down here. Like I say, we'll definitely be back in the summer when the lake's in its full glory. Mega. Right, should we have a little look at this fish then? Lovely Pines Lake mirror, obviously one of the younger ones. They've got um, various different strains in here. They've got VS fish, got some Simos, and uh, a few others as well, by all accounts. So, yeah, nice mixed bag, which is what you always want from a fishery, isn't it? Lovely box of chocolates. Awesome. Right, I'm going to get this one back and uh, get these rods in, have a little mooch about, and then uh, make my way back to Colchester because I'm kicking up. Sorry about that. my smell fish. <laughs> oh, there you go. Angler's drive. My drive for fishing, really. I first started when my dad used to take me and my uncle as a kid to a little commercials, they'd fish, we'd be float fishing. They'd put a leisure rod out, uh, as you do sort of pleasure fishing, getting into it. And uh, like most anglers, I got hooked, excuse the pun, <laughs> pretty quickly. And uh, I started to ask my dad to take me a lot more and uh, my uncle, and then me and my uncle started doing a few little trips on one of my local parks, Hampstead, um, caught a few tench, just uh, going with him and sort of hitting his rods at the age of like seven and eight. And uh, by the time I was 10, 11, um, I remember reading Terry Irons books. And uh, yeah, the, bite, the bug sort of bit, I'd go over the parks in the close season, watch all these beautiful carp spawning um, and really want to catch them. And I think the love for the outdoors as well, I've always been someone who, from the city to be wanting to be at one with nature all the time can be a rarity but i love being out and uh with out with nature so fishing sort of comes hand in hand with that i, I just love being being out and enjoying it and um yeah sort of fished ever since i guess it's hard to explain but we all know why we're uh, addicted to it and um yes yeah, it's, it's it's been been the same ever since it's sort of <clears throat> kept me out probably a lot of trouble don't know where I'd be without it and um yeah the the sort of connection with nature as well that's what keeps me going um keeps the the buzz firing um and catching mega carp that don't get caught a lot 
So yeah, I think that's they're the sort of three main things. Um, keeps me, yeah, keeps me out of trouble. Keeps me uh, in close contact with nature, which I love, um, and is in my blood. And uh, yeah, catching special unknown carp. Yo, 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 welcome to the first Carp Angle Extra. Okay, so what is Carp Angle Extra? Basically, it's gonna be some shorter instructional videos that are gonna go into a bit more depth on various topics, um, things that apply to my fishing, and hopefully things that are gonna help you improve your fishing too. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at Google Earth. Now, Google Earth is a ridiculously helpful tool for us carp anglers. Um, I use it all the time. And what I find is that, you know, it's a really good way of getting a venue into your head before you've even stepped foot on it. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, obviously there's loads you can learn from an overhead shot, even if you can't see features. Um, first of all, obviously you've got wind directions. You can see when, where the sun comes up. Obviously the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west and travels around the south. So you know that these south facing islands um, are going to be getting a lot of sun when the sun's out and for example if you've got sort of strong northerly winds you know they're going to be pushing this way which is going to make those areas um, of the island sort of in the lee of the wind which is obviously going to make them warmer more comfortable places for the fish to be so good kind of ports of call if you like so this is the picture that you get up when you put the address in um, which is, I think it's the most recent one, which is a bit of a weird effect and there's not a lot that you can see um, with regards to features. So, what a lot of people don't know about Google Earth is that you can actually change the view to any photo that's ever been taken. Um, so to get that up, you have to click on the clock, which is on the top of the screen, and that brings up a timeline. Then what you can do is flick back through every picture, as you can see, these ones, there's not a huge amount to see. Uh, this year, was that, 2017? There are some lighter areas and some darker areas. Obviously, the lighter areas look like they're the, the cleaner areas to me. Um, but let's just keep going back and see what else we can find. Okay, so 2006. Now you can see there's a lot of weed in there in 2006. And you can see the areas where there's less weed and likely to be quite clear, I imagine, because they're lighter. It's not always the case. Sometimes it's the opposite. You know, the darker areas can be the weed or the darker areas can be the areas where there's not weed. So, yeah, it's just a case of kind of sussing it out, really. Um, so let's, let's keep going back because obviously Kevin Nash created this lake and there's no way Kevin would have just dug a bowl, a flat bowl, you know, he had the opportunity to create the lake of his dream. So I'm sure there's quite a few features in there um, to be found. So this picture, 2005, obviously again, big lighter areas. Um, I imagine at this time the fish were doing a lot of their feeding on the bottom in these sort of zones and probably spending quite a lot of time around this area, maybe patrolling that island. And in this end of the lake, as you can see, chock-a-block with weed. Doesn't look like there's many spots up there whatsoever. Um, obviously, it doesn't mean the fish don't feed up there because the fish obviously feed in the weed. That's it's where a lot of the food is. Um, but obviously, to, to present rigs on particular spots, then you need clear areas. Um, and you can see where they are within that one. So that's good to know. And we'll go back a bit more. Oh right, okay, so 2000. This is probably, the lake's probably only been there a few years at this point. Um, and as you can see, the water's fairly clear, but it gives the topography of the lake bed away really well. So you've got what looks to be like a bar here, um, and then another one to the left above that island. And also, if you look closely around these islands, there's like a dark line. Um, around either of them. I have to excuse if you can hear that noise. I've got builders next door. Um, so yeah, the, what's happened here is obviously the digger's been on this island, putting his arm out and dragging back. And by doing so, he's created like a trough all the way around the island. Um, so obviously it goes down and then up again. You can see the lighter areas either side of it. And then in between the island, there's a much darker area. 
and I imagine they've dug that bit out deeper as well and it's probably done, been done in a similar way that they've dug it whilst being on the island and scraping back towards the island itself. So um, yeah, obviously that's, that's given a lot away that has. And then what you can also do is you can measure the distance of these features. So if you click on the ruler in the top of the screen, brings up that, you can change it to yards, feet, meters, whatever you want. And then if I was to click on the bank and click out to that bar, it's about 25 yards off the bank. So if you were to turn up, then, you know, if you wanted to find that spot, and obviously you've got a really good rough idea of how far out it is. And then indeed you can also click either side of it. So you can see that that's about four yards wide so it's about a rod length wide that bar and you can see it's quite long as well it's what probably 35 yards long um, so yeah really good feature there's obviously going to be sort of um, a trough either side of that where, where food's going to build up and then you've got the the shallow area as well um, so yeah definitely definitely a good zone and then obviously you've got a similar kind of bar on the other end up here which is yeah, similar, about 30 yards long and yeah, about four yards wide. So yeah, really, really valuable information that um, there's just so much you can learn. And like I say, going back in time, that's, that's the biggest edge of Google Earth for me. Um, there's obviously times when, say the photo was taken in the winter and obviously the fish aren't feeding as much, the water can be clearer, or perhaps the lake, you know, you go back into a, to a time when there wasn't any fish in the lake or not as many fish, and so obviously the water is clearer then and you can tend to see a bit more. So that's a good, good uh, bit of reconnaissance work, should I say, for, uh, for the church lake in a couple of days. Buzzing for that. Uh, another, give you another little example of how I've used it lately. I've done a couple of sessions on Twinersh over the winter. And obviously I've, I've never been there before and I hadn't seen it in the summer. Um, and what I was able to see with this, when I went on to the most recent picture, which is not this one, let's just change it up to 2021. So obviously this is the summer before the winter so i'm able to see where the main weed beds were in the summer um, and obviously the thickest weed beds tend to be where the fish gravitate to in the colder months not all the time necessarily but it offers them cover and um, obviously a bit of warmth but also that tends to be where the natural food is left in the decaying weed so um, yeah it's, it's it's good to know where those main weed beds were the other thing I was looking at when I first looked at this picture was, well, between these islands, it looks like a real key area. And then I was able to go back to, I think it's 1999, when those islands were quite fresh. And as you see, they hadn't really um, been there for very long. And if you look very closely, there's a lighter area between the two, and then a lighter area between the bank and this one. So obviously that was a roadway which was used to create the islands and then afterwards, they probably just scrape the top off, um, leaving those shallower areas. And obviously, this being out there between the two islands, um, away from everything, there's big trees on the islands now, so it offers a huge amount of cover and a very likely looking area. So yeah, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how to use Google Earth and obviously why it can be such an edge for you in your fishing. A question every non-angler asks, asks um, uh, a carp fisherman or some fisherman, you know, what, what was the one that got away, the, the one that you lost? So if I could have that one back, um, there's, been two, there's been two or three, uh, a couple of significant ones. I think probably the, the most significant one was um, John short stint on Fendrayton uh, quite a while ago, 15 years ago or something. And... Uh, there was a common that never got caught, known as the stripy common. Uh, this fish was epic proportions, the people that had seen it. I, I'd never seen it up to this point. Uh, I was fishing on the lake with a couple of mates. One of our pals had come for social and my other friend Dave, uh, he had a ticket for the lake as well. And me and, and my other pal were out in the boat, uh, cruising, looking for fish. 
and Dave rang us. He was up a tree on the, in a little bay on the far margin on the jungle bank and I thought he'd fell out of the tree and broke his leg. The way he was talking, he was so like having a panic attack. This fish, this fish, is like couldn't get the words out. He was that excited. Anyway, it was this stripey common. It was directly below him in a tree. So Roger and I were already out in the boat looking for, for fish. We drifted across the lake, turned the motor off, drifted into this bay where uh, these fish were. Anyway, we ended up seeing all the fish. Um, this fish didn't look quite as big from the angle I was at in the boat as what Dave was saying, but it was clearly some big fish that we'd never seen. And it was about six fish in this group. Uh, and Dave and I made a plan. There was a swim in this bay, but we made a plan to fish either side of the bay uh, so that we didn't spook these fish and we'd try and pick them off from the outsides. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, we started picking these fish off. We, uh, we had sort of a bite. One of us had at least one bite each session for Fendrate and that was like, uh, you know, you could go a year without catching uh, and people did. So we're picking these fish off. Anyway, we had the spots that were going, we were fishing about 200 meters with uh, braid straight through uh, on this bar and I had three, I was fishing to the right, about 45 degrees, I had three rods along this bar. And we'd had probably, of these half dozen fish that we thought were living around this bay, because um, I, I saw this fish from Dave's angle uh, a couple of weeks later on one of the things, it was incredible. I was driving an old Peugeot 405 at the time, and had a massive round steering wheel. I remember looking at this fish's back from above it and putting me, imagining my hands on the steering wheel and going, it's back's the width of this big 405 steering wheel. It was huge, it was the biggest fish I've ever seen in the water. And uh, so picking these fish off, anyway, it was fairly confident the bites were coming at 7 a.m. Every single morning it, it was 7 a.m. One of us would get a bite either side of the bay. I think once we both did. And uh, we're now, if this is this one group of fish, we've had most of them. Like, it's literally the stripey common to go. Anyway, I had an absolute screamer, 7 a.m. Came running out of the bivvy. Um, it was churning, it was like <laughs> on the braid. And... It was like, <laughs> gone, like literally pulled off. And I couldn't stop this fish. It, it, it probably run 30, 40 yards, couldn't stop it. Anyway, it was my first night on this session and the drag was a little bit too tight for the braid. And the reason why it wasn't coming off smoothly, obviously braid, there's no stretch in it whatsoever. It's unforgiving. We're fishing in an extreme circumstance, 200 plus meters out on a very, very weedy lake. Whenever you did catch a fish, it was like a washing line, which you picked it up, which was almost too heavy to actually lift the rod up with. So it's a, an extreme circumstance. I just, uh, I don't want to say the name of the hook, so I'm not blaming the hook, but it was like a size six wide gapy type hook. And it had, I thought it had snapped or something had happened anyway, got the whole rig back and the hook was just completely open. And it wasn't the hook's fault. I, I was fishing in extreme circumstance, 200 meters, heavy braid, lots of weed, with the, and the drag was too tight. It was completely my fault. Um, if I could have, and we'd caught all the fish in this group, there's literally the stripey to go, and this was the most powerful fish I've ever felt. I could, just couldn't stop it. And I was just locked up too tight for the circumstance, you know, should be too slack if anything with braid um, for that you know with heavy leads because we were fishing six ounce gripper leads on this bar and then we were dropping the two ounce back lead in the weed nearby so you know there's a hell of a lot of resistance already with the 200 meters line completely my fault if I could have that one back that could have been a fish that's never been caught to this day was anywhere between 55 and 65 pound 15 years ago like it would have been may not have been that fish but if I could have that one back that's the one I'd back round. Yeah, spooky nights. We've, we've all had a few of them, mate, haven't we? But we've obviously been at it a few years, like. Um, yeah, one time fishing a nature reserve over in Cambridge, and uh, me and a friend of mine had gone through some fields at dark, a field full of rams. Big, you know, a ram, like big creature, big animal. Um, in the middle of the night, we got the rods out, we're fishing early hours of the morning, and uh, we heard a scream, high pitched, like a horrendous scream. We both woke us both up. And in the morning we had to leave just before it got light. Well, it was just on light. And we walked back through the field and this one of these rams had just been decapitated. Head gone, body, just blood mess, body gone, just a head. And it's like, I mean, what would do that? I have no idea. But yeah, another spooky night. Um, fishing a place called Hardwick Hall. There's an old monument, there's a, a hill behind it, it's called Droid, Droid's Hill. 
And there was an old castle, an old monument in the background. And anyway, one night, same friend again, Jeff. Um, we go back many years from school, we fish together at school. And uh, we were on there, there was snow on the ground. December time, snow on the ground. Used to, there was a gate, the spring on it, load, like spring loaded gate. So you walk, open it and it would clatter to when it, when it closed. Anyway, this night we're in the, we was in a double two man bivy together in this shelter, we had brolly out. So anyway, we're in the tent, drinking tea, having a smoke and we had this gate. It was like, shit. It was, you know, middle of winter, late at night, open. Both got out of the boots, bright light, white everywhere. You know, it was a big moon. and. Walked down, there was no footprints, nobody had been through that gate, but it had clearly opened and slammed too. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, we were both a bit edgy that night. What was the other one with the battlefield? The battlefield, Swarkston, on the monument, um, Swarkston Gravel Pit over in Derby. It's where Bonnie Prince, when the Scots tried to invade England, I don't know the year, it's obviously hundreds of years ago. Um, yeah, Bonnie Prince Charlie, apparently the English defeated him on this bridge, it's an ancient causeway, it's probably half a mile long and it runs by the side of the gravel pit with the same friend again Jeff um, we were fishing on there one night it was the early hours of the morning like two threes o'clock you know summertime summer morning and we both woke up to the sound of clashing of swords and med we could hear horses you could just there was only it went on for minutes and we both was just like we could you know it was it was crazy it was absolutely bizarre and then just stopped as quick as it started wow. yeah that was you can imagine yeah that was pretty freaky Goosebumps. Yeah, it was it, honestly. I mean, for two, if you was on your own, nobody believe you would. They, no one, you know. But there was there was two of us, and it, it happened. You know, we'd, yeah, yeah. We hadn't been taking any mind-bending drugs or anything. We'd had a couple of cans of beer the night before, and that was it. You know, so yeah. Can't explain things like that. No, no. And it was a full-on. You know, there was people. You could hear men's voices shouting and swords and yeah, just yeah, crazy, absolutely crazy night that was. Well, that's it for this show, I'm afraid. Um, obviously a little bit shorter than normal, but hopefully you've had a little bit of inspiration from that to get yourself out on the bank too. Obviously it's that time of year when there's lovely blossom everywhere, the flowers are popping up, the sun is giving off tons and tons of vitamin D, and it's obviously very good to be out in that. It makes you feel super good, um, but also obviously we love our carp fishing and it gives us that little buzz and that little escape from uh, real life, I guess, doesn't it? So, what do we want to say before I sign off? Ah, yeah, that's right. Obviously, there's a lot of budding videographers out there these days and there's a lot of jobs that come up within the trade in that. So, I thought maybe a good way for people to get their work out there in front of a big audience is to offer a little competition where you yourself can get your footage shown on Carp Angle. So I'm not gonna set any kind of particular criteria for with regards to what the content has to be. I'll let you get your creative juices flowing. Um, if you wanted to do some kind of diary, whether you wanted to do some sort of inspirational piece, some sort of arty montage, whatever you like, you know, variety is the spice of life. And uh, with regards to time limits, I'd say no more than 10 minutes, um, but it doesn't actually matter how long it is, as long as it's no longer than that. And what I'll do is I'll pick my favourite ones throughout the months and I'll put one on each show, if I get enough of them that is, and then at the end of the year I'll put it out there to the viewers and uh, you can pick which was your favourite and we'll sort out a nice prize for the winner but like I said you know at the moment there's a lot of jobs going in this trade so something like that is great for your portfolio. I'll leave that one with you everyone you know I wish you a fantastic month and massive thanks again for your support and contributions towards the channel without you guys I could not keep it up so uh, Big ups yourself, get yourself out fishing and have a lovely month. I'll see you in four weeks time.